Y'all ready? All right, let's pray and then you guys buckle up. Heavenly Father, how amazing are you? God, how amazing is your love and your grace that you, that you reach down, God, and you, you pick us up no matter how, far, how hard we fall. And God, you've made a way. From beginning to the end, God, the Bible, there is a way. There is one way, and you made that way. And God, I thank you that on the days I, I can't get up, and I think I'll never get up again, God, that you still make a way. And God, you know that there is nothing good in me, and there is no way I can do your word any justice tonight. And God, you know, I don't have anything prepared, but a title. So God, I'm asking that you would show up in power and in love today. I'm asking today, God, that the simplicity of the gospel and the truth of your love would shine bright. And God, I also ask that tonight we would take our masks off and be real and realize we are in a fight. And it is so, so past time to get up. And God, I just thank you for the honor to share your love tonight. It's in Jesus' name we all say. Amen. Hallelujah is right. So Rocky last week, he talked about when we fall, we can get up. And we all know that. We all know that we can get up, but what is the problem? Because if we're honest, a lot of times we just stay laying there on our back. I'm 30 years old. For 30 years of my life, the devil is trying to take me out. Is there anybody else in here? Anybody else in here are tired of the devil reaching down and trying to take you out? Don't you know that's what the devil does? The Bible says the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus came to give you life and life more abundant. I don't know your church experience, but I want you to listen tonight because I won't be the preacher that'll read the whole Bible to you. You can do that some other time. I wanna put some truth into you that'll penetrate your heart and your spirit so you can know that God is real and that you can get up and you don't have to lay on your back any longer. You don't have to be stuck in that place any longer. I'll tell you the truth about my church experience. I was forced to go to church for 12 years of my life because my mom thought it was best and she was right. But then what happened is I got to the point in my life where, well, I was a little bit too, bad, too big for her to drag anymore, so I stayed home. And if I'm honest, I wanted nothing to do with God because in those 12 years, I learned all about what I needed to do and the clothes I needed to wear and how I needed to be a good boy. I just couldn't do it. Anybody ever feel like that? I could never be that person. I could never measure up. And I was thinking, man, if God loves me, then why do I have to do all these things? I don't know about you, but I'm going to share the good news tonight. The good news is we can't measure up. No matter how hard we try, nothing we can do can get us to God. And the good news is because we could not get to God, God came here. God came to earth to rescue us. And I want to tell you something tonight. God never promised it would be easy. And he never called you to sit on the bench. And I'll tell you, the biggest problem we have in Huntington, West Virginia right now is we've got too many bench warmers that are called to be in the game. Look, I've been where you are, maybe a little bit different, but I chose the same path that you did. I chose to go down the wrong road so far that no one ever thought I would go back except my mom. I'm talking about all these expectations upon me and before they know it, I'm living with gang members in the west side of Charleston having a pistol put to my head being robbed and saying, listen, if you don't give me everything you have, you're dead. And I said, well, then kill me. Isn't God merciful? I don't know why it jammed. I don't know why I'm alive today, but I know there has to be a reason. I know that there has to be a reason to live. I felt so empty. I remember getting up, my Jordans were gone, my car was gone, everything I had was gone. Can anybody relate? Maybe your story's different. You had nothing and you're literally laying there on your back. You have fallen, but you can get up. 
boy, did I fall. But I got up. And some of us, man, we, we fell, but we, we got right back on the path. And then we fell again and we got right back and that's okay. But I don't know you, I don't know. But there's, there might be someone in this room today that feels like I fell and I just can't get up anymore. You're right, you can't on your own. I've been there recently, I've been there again. Before I get into that, I wanna tell you the truth about the gospel because the truth is not that you have to do this, 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 this to get to God. It's God came down as a man to get us and died for you on the cross and paid the penalty for your sins. And if there's anybody in this room that doesn't believe God loves you, let me tell you something tonight. We're asking the wrong questions. Well, what if, if God loved me, then why this? No, 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 no. If God didn't love you, he never would have sent his son. The proof of God's love is Christ crucified. If it was only on words on a page, I wouldn't believe it. But what God said is I will put myself in a, in a womb of a baby, as helpless as you can be, and I will be born of a woman, and I will grow up, and I will be ridiculed and mocked and scourged. I will be made fun of, and I will do all those things, but nothing will stop me from going all the way to the cross. Why for you? I want you to take it personal, for God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son, that if you would just believe in him, you would have everlasting life. I'm talking about this is a personal thing. If you were the only person that would ever believe, he still would have sent his son. He still would have took those whips. He still would have took the agony. He still would have took those nails. He did it for you. Why? So you could get up. I fell, but I got up. Anybody ever watched Tarzan as a kid? King of the jungle. See, what happened to us is the same thing the Rockies have been talking about in the garden. We sinned and it separated us from God. And there was a great gulf between us and we could not get to God. Why? Wow, there's all kinds of alligators on there. And I'm not Tarzan. I can't get to the other side. So I'm stuck here. And no matter how good I am and nothing I can do can get me to God. There's no way I can cross this gulf of alligators. So what Jesus does is Jesus walks right through it. He picks us up at our lowest point and carries us to the other side. And I wish I can tell you that that's where I live happily ever after. It's where I lead the greatest ministry in Huntington and where I do all these awesome things for God, which I've done. But you know what happened to me? I fell again. And it took me two and a half years to get all the way back up. To get back off the bench. I fell, but I got up. It's never too late to get back up. And what I want you to know tonight, and this is very important. If you gave your life to Christ, if you surrendered it all, if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you're saved. You are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And what I want you to know today, he has given you a purpose. If it was, I hear this all the time. I hear all the time, I can't wait to get to heaven one day. I'm just waiting to get there. I want you to know that your faith and your Christianity and your belief is so much more than getting to heaven when you die. Now, that's a pretty good perk, right? That's pretty cool. But if it was just about getting to heaven one day, then the second you gave your life to Christ, he would zap you out of here. Anybody get zapped out yet? So what I'm telling you is too many of us are sitting on the bench when we need to get up. God has called us to something so much greater than the life we used to live. It is time to fight. Hey, Hanshaw, Dylan, come up here real quick. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take you too. Who's the best fighter in the room? I'll give you the best fighter in the room. All right. Get up. All right, you ready? What's going to happen is, anybody else a fighter in their day? Come on. Somebody, nobody else in here ever got in a fight in their life? Wow, man, this is, a, this is an awesome crowd. Huh? Now, I'll lose if he gets up here. Don't bring him up here. <laughs> so what happened in my day in the madness is I like to fight. And 
I, I would love to tell you I was 100, no, but it was more like, I don't know, 40 and 60 and on the losing end of things. And I always had someone like this guy to back me up. So what's going to happen? And you know what we do with the hats. Where's your hats at? Guys, you're fighters. All right, get over here. Let's go. All right. All right. So he knocks me out. I'll get up again. He knocks me out. And now you're in big trouble, right? And I, you guys can go. Thank you. And, and, how it, and this illustration, and then they were in big trouble because he's with me tonight for a reason. But no, let's be real. Why, why in the world did he give that crazy illustration? Because I know, even though you didn't raise your hand, a lot of you in here are fighters and you love to fight. Well, the Bible says that you are in a fight, that you are in the good fight of faith, that you are soldiers. He didn't call you to be reserves, backups, and bench warmers. He didn't call you to maybe get drafted one day. The day you said yes to Jesus, he put you in the game. And some of us are forcing ourselves to get on the bench when we're supposed to be in the game. You know why he's here? Because when I was on my back, and I was on my back for a couple years. I'm talking on my back. I'm talking about I couldn't get up. You know the guys that are helping me get up? What I'm saying is we have a bigger fight than we ever have. We just fight differently. We have a purpose and it's better. Instead of getting in those fights and seeing how many of our friends get in jail or, or get put in recovery, we have a fight that we have everything we need to win. And it is, someone said to me, man, church is so boring. I'm like, dude, if church is boring, you're doing it wrong. You are doing it wrong because it doesn't look boring when I read the scriptures. And there's going to be a lot of you upset about me not reading a bunch of scriptures. This whole thing is laced with scripture. Everything I'm saying is laced with it's all in there. And I know most of you, if I start reading, will go to sleep. And that got me on a time limit tonight. You are in a fight. It's the fight of your life. And God's put brothers and sisters in your path that are going to help you get up. And Jesus has made a way that look, even in every mistake you've made, no matter how bad, no matter if you've been in the pinnacle and you've been a preacher that everybody knows like me and you still fell on your back, the whole world can talk bad about you. The whole world can discredit your name. And look, I'm, I'm going to be real today. I deserved it. I was laying all the way on my back because of the mistakes I made. I can blame everybody else. Isn't that what we do? We blame shift. It's their fault. It's their fault. Oh man, what happened to that Ross guy? He went through a divorce. He got fired from his church. He's laying on the ground and they laughed and they mocked. But man, I'm thankful God wasn't done with me. And I'm telling you, if you're in this room or you're home watching, God is not done with you. He has a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for the good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. You can get up, but will you? And will you get off the bench and see the people around you that are falling and reach out your hands? Because God's only plan, I don't understand, is to use you and to use me. That's his only plan. That's why we're here. I'm a recovery coach. Any coaches in the building, recovery coaches? I don't have any clients like this. I've got all amazing clients who do everything they're supposed to. But I've heard some stories... <laughs> And I've heard that there's clients that think you're supposed to do everything for them. Is that coaching? Because I grew up and I was a pretty, pretty good basketball player. And my coach yelled a lot. And he drew a lot of plays, but he never ran the plays for you. Did you know that Jesus already wrote all the plays out and he's waiting for you? God is waiting for you. The Bible says we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. 
Someone said, well, you just need to calm down. You're getting a little serious and you're too pumped up. Do you understand that I was on the way to split hell wide open? Do you understand that God stopped the bullet for me? God did this for me. God did this for me. Do you understand that I shouldn't have got that fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth chance? Do you understand that this is everything? This isn't something I do on Sunday and Monday because Christianity is not come and sit in a pew and then go home and live like the rest of the world. I'm not saying you don't make mistakes. I've made plenty of them and I'm honest about it. I need his love and grace. I'm not here because I'm perfect. I'm here because I know I need Jesus and there's no way I would have ever got up again if it wasn't for him. Because I heard that voice from heaven say, Ross, at 22 years old, I did this for you. I did this for you. I looked down on the, from the cross for you. I, I, I was crucified for you. I looked down upon you, Ross, when I was dying. I said, son, I have called and encouraged you for so much more of this. Why don't you just get up and be my boy? I heard that voice again this morning. It's been a long time. I'm not saying I haven't been involved in ministry. I, I've, been, I've been trying to serve Jesus with everything I can through it, but it was only today that I finally set in stone. I'm, I'm getting all the way up. It's time. Jesus has made a way. Jesus is everything. He's amazing. God is not mad at you. He is madly in love with you. Someone that is mad is not sending their son to die for you, is not pursuing you until you take your last breath. God is not mad. He's a dad. God is not mad. He's a dad. He's a father with open arms that when you wonder and everybody in the world has cut you off and we've all been there, his arms are wide open. See, the gospel is simple. It's three words. Just come home. But it's not come home and then sit down at the table and stay there. It's wow, can I, I can't believe how much he loves me. I can't believe what he's done for me. I can't believe he's always there. He never leaves me nor forsakes me. So what do we do with it? Do we applaud on Monday night and Sunday morning? Or do we realize we've been called into the greatest fight of the world and this city depends on us? Look, man, if I was Jesus, I wouldn't have picked the guys he picked either, and I definitely wouldn't have picked me. But for whatever reason, that's God's plan. See, Jesus shows up on earth and says, well, I could do everything by myself, but I'm going to assemble a team of 12 guys. I would have never picked those guys. They had none of the qualifications. I mean, there was a ripoff, a tax collector. He was lower than a sinner in that day. There was ignorant fishermen that had no idea what they're doing. But God doesn't call the qualified. He, qual he calls those that are simply willing. And tonight he's saying, will you finally get up off that bench and live out the call I've placed on your life? God has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. Are we going to fight? Are we going to fight? Are we soldiers? Are we ambassadors? Are we the ones that God is making his appeal through? Or are we bench warmers? Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It's not our fists. It's the word. It's love. It's reaching out to those that need it most. It's gosh, Rocky, you hit me hard last week. It's not chasing after the wall mans. I know I said that wrong. Because I, prom I promise you it'll get you laying on your back and it'll be hard to get up. Sexual sin is not something to play with, let me tell you. It'll just keep, I'll say it again. Sexual sin is not something to play with. You'll be laying on your back just like I was and you better hope you got a Charles and a Rocky to get you up. Because it is tough. And I'll tell you what it'll do. It'll keep you from the person that God has for you. You will delay your blessings. I don't know if you've heard of the promised land or if you've read the Old Testament, but God had all this plan for them. And it's because they wouldn't do what they knew God said to do, they wandered around and never saw it except two. I don't know about you, but I want everything that God has for me. I want it all. I'm God's child. That's what the word says. I'm his beloved son. I don't deserve that. Look, I never deserved that. Let me talk about your value. We, in our efforts and in, in, in our flesh, we are all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God and we are worth nothing. But to God the Father, you were worth the blood of Jesus. 
And he has the scars to prove it. I wake up every morning, even, in, even when I'm struggling on my good days and my bad days, and the first word I say every day is Jesus. I have the nail holes in Scripture on my wrist so I can remember the price that God paid for me. I remember Galatians 2.20 that I've been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus never told his disciples to go sit in a room, praise, and wait for him to come back. He said, go out and heal. He said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Go preach the gospel. Go serve. Go feed the needy. Go help. Extend your arms. You see, the religious establishment ignored people like us. Let's just be honest. But Jesus came on the scene and said, those are the very ones I came for. And when they questioned it, they're like, Jesus, why in the world are you eating with those guys? Jesus said, I didn't come for the healthy. I came for the sick. I'm telling you, I was sick. And the only reason I'm not sick is because of Jesus. Jesus chose to use us. That's his only way. When are we going to get off the bench and get into the fight? Because there is a fight out here. I don't, need, I don't want to hear about another loved one dying. I want him to know, like Rocky, that our phones are all available. That we're all there for you. That we're going to lift you up and pick you up, not put you down. We're not going to cheer when you get on your back or watch as you fall on your back. We're going to help make sure you don't. I'm talking about being our brother's keeper. But Ross, you don't know what I've done, man. I just went way too far. No, did you? No one is too far from the love of God. Everyone is someone God created in that garden. Everyone is someone that God sent his son to die for. What if we knew we could walk in our purpose? And we could actually be the hands and feet of Jesus. And we could actually get up off these benches and make a difference. Rocky said, I've fallen, but I can get up. I don't know about you, but I'm up and I'm ready. Some of you are going to you're gonna cheer a little bit and you're going to say that you're ready to fight and you're ready to get in the game. But you're not. I'm challenging you tonight to get up. You got everything you need to get up. You have every resource that you could have. The creator of the universe has already done it all. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more and there's nothing you can do to make him love you less. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you and there is nothing you can do about it. I'm a father and I'm far from a perfect father but it don't matter what my babies do, I'll never ever stop loving my little girls. <laughs> nothing. God's not mad, he's a dad. He's never going to change his mind about you. Oh, what are you saying, Ross? It's okay to continue and do all the bad things and continue to sin? Absolutely not. God forbid. I'm saying God loves you so much. He wants to reach down with patience and love and grace and tell you that there is a better way. There is something to completely fulfill you. We chase the wrong things because there was a hole in our heart. And the truth is that hole can only be filled by God. And if today you still feel like, well, I know I have God, but I still don't feel it. I still feel empty. Get up off the bench and let God use you because God is waiting to use every one of us. If he wasn't, he would have zapped us out of here. I don't know about you guys, but you ever, as a kid, you maybe had a girlfriend, you had those flowers. What do they call those flowers? The petals on them we used? I don't remember. I'm not a flower guy. <laughs> but anyways, you guys know, you picked a flower and he loves me. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. You know what I'm talking about? Daisies! God gave me a daisy. <laughs> Can I tell you about it? He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. It never changes. You can lose the love of your life and who you thought was your Eve and your soulmate. And you can allow that to destroy you or you can allow God 
and those you love to get you back up, stay focused on Jesus, stay focused on what you sang, that nothing, Jesus plus nothing is everything, you still have it all. And you will not replace her by just grabbing a quick woman and falling into sin and doing all those things. It'll compound it and compound it and compound it. And you'll think you're still doing right until you're laying on your back. But you can get up. You can fight. You can walk in your purpose. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. Jesus himself said, the things that I do, you shall do also, and even greater things than I did, you shall do, because I'm going to my Father. I didn't believe that. I grew up in a church, when I, or when I got saved, the church taught there was no more miracles. They died. They were just gone. And then I was on the four-way and cross lanes praying for people, and this lady was like, I need you to get rid of this tumor. And I'm like, what? How am I going to do that? She's like, just lay hands on it. I'm sick, and I'll recover. And I'm like, I don't believe that's possible. She's like, will you just try? I'm like, sure. God, would it disappear? Boom, it's gone. I'm like, this has got to be crazy. But I've seen it. I've seen the dead raised. Some of you have been dead and you've been raised. Time and time again, and God's saying, I got you up so you wouldn't have to lay back down, so you can walk in victory and walk in your purpose and walk in your rightful identity as a child of God. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. If God approves you, if God accepts you and God loves you, what's it matter what anybody else thinks? We're always gonna have haters. Jesus, who was perfect, had plenty of haters. They called him a drunkard, a wine bubbler, all these things, but it never moved him. It doesn't have to move you. God wants to stir you up tonight because he wants to do something bigger than you've ever imagined that if I would tell you about it, you would never believe it. You would never believe it. He wants to use you in such a powerful way. I told that guy this morning the story. He said, no, man, I don't care what you say. God couldn't love me, man. God couldn't. I said, there was a boy that your age, that's 22, same age as you are, and thought the same thing. He had burned every bridge in life. Every bridge. Anybody else done that? I'm only one. He burned every bridge. He had nowhere to go. He was homeless. He got on a train. He decided he's going to drive by his parents' house. He hadn't talked to his parents in three years. And he called his mom on the train and said, Mom, I'm desperate. I have nowhere to go. I know dad would never accept me back after everything I did. But I'm going to drive by. And if there's any way dad would give me one more chance, hang out a white sheet somewhere outside that I can see and I'll get off the train and I'll come in. And if I don't see any white, I'll just keep going and you'll never hear from me again. So he got on the train, it had been, it'd been about an hour, so he knew his dad would have time to get the message from his mom. And he sat down with a lady and said to her, listen, I'm gonna close my eyes. We're about to go past my old house. If you see anything white, would you please let me know? And I want to open my eyes and see it. But if you don't, just don't bother me. So he sat there kind of like smiling. He had his eyes closed. Knowing he doesn't deserve a second chance. Knowing there's no way his dad would forgive him. And that lady looked over and said, look, look, look. And he opened his eyes and his dad was out there waving a white flag. And there were white towels everywhere. And there was welcome home signs. What I'm telling you the story for is that's God for you individually. I don't care where you've been or what you've done. The white flags wave, just come home. And what we do is, okay, most of us finally get that message. So we go in the house and we lay in our beds and forget about it. It's time to get up. It's time to walk in your purpose. It's time to allow God to use you the way he wants to use you. If he was done with you, you wouldn't be here. Let me say that again. If he was done with you, you wouldn't be here. God loves you. Get up and join the fight. Because I'm telling you, it's a good fight. I'm telling you, it's an exciting adventure. And I'm telling you that you will love watching this city be turned upside down because Jesus called ordinary people just like us. And when they went in cities, they said, there's those guys that turned the world upside down.
God wants to turn the world upside down with you. I didn't just say the city, the world. He's waiting for you to get up. I fell, but I got up and you can too. Would everybody in here bow your head and close your eyes as we pray to close tonight? Katie, if you don't care to play softly. God, I thank you for this divine appointment tonight. I thank you for your love. I thank you that every time I've been on my back, you've been right there with arms extended. God, I thank you that I don't have to remain in my sin, remain separated from you. I thank you, God, that Jesus came and Jesus made a way that I could be righteous, right standing with God, that I could be justified, justified, never sin, that I can walk in victory and walk in my rightful identity. Okay, it's, it's loud. And tonight God is, is talking to you right now with your eyes closed and heads bowed. He is talking to you individually. He is telling you that he called you for more than this. He is telling you that he's not done with you. He's telling you that you don't have to continue falling that you can get up and you can stay up and you can walk in your purpose and walk in your identity and you can make a difference. How does it start? Well, first off, if you're in this room, I will never preach a message and not give you an invitation to accept the love of Jesus Christ because for 22 years, God, of my life, you as my witness, no one ever told me that I could be saved. No one told me, so God, I will never, ever not give someone the chance. And God, I want these people, hearts pierced tonight, to know there is nothing they can do to be saved and earn your love and earn their way to you and be forgiven, but believe with all their heart that God, you love them, that you sent Jesus to die for them, and that they rose and that you rose on the third day. And God, all we have to do is believe that and confess Jesus as Lord and the word says we shall be saved. But God, that is not the end, it's the very beginning. And you didn't call any bench warmers or backups. You called us into the great fight of faith. You called us to be real and to be honest and to be open because you already know. You called us to help lift up those that have fallen, to help lift up our brothers when they fall. God, if there's someone in this room tonight that doesn't know you or has any doubt, Right now, God, would you give them the courage to stand up right now? If there is anyone in this room that needs to surrender everything to Jesus tonight, God is going to start something great in your life. If that's you right now, would you stand up? Come on, I'm on the count of three. I know there's a lot of you. God, right now, touch their hearts. If there was someone in here that needs to give everything to you, God, to repent and believe, would you give them the courage to do it on the count of three? One, two, Three, I love it. They're not even waiting for the count. If you stood up, would you come up to the front and let us pray for you tonight? Everybody else in this room, I am calling you out. Two thirds of God is go. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go tonight. Go and be the hands and feet of Jesus. God loves you. If you need prayer or you gave your life to Christ, come on up. I love you guys. You can go when you want.